Hello you guys, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be another one of those little technic knack related videos. Today I'm going to be set up, setting up my own little personal network. And the start of the show is this GLINet Mango Mini Smart Router. Pretty small, self-explanatory. Um, I'm a little under the weather today because I have allergies and I can barely breathe half the time. So yeah, that's good. Now. This little mango router cost me about $25, and I've already actually started using this thing, and it's actually really neat. It has lots of cool features, and can do a number of different things, not just be a router. So, without further ado, let's dig in. So, opening this box up, it's actually really simple. Usually when you order this, there'll be a sticker over this part, but all you gotta do is just push in a little bit and pull out. Like that. If you don't do that, you might tear the box, but... I like to save my box, so it's fine. From the box, you don't get the power adapter. I put this in for my an old on tablet. I did a video about it a long time ago. That's no longer with us, so I have this adapter still. Um, so here's the router itself. It's actually quite small. It fits in the palm of your hand. You get this little flat, this thin Ethernet cable, and I think that's like really cool. And then you get a three foot micro USB cable. So I'm not going to be using that today. I'm not going to be using this Ethernet cable today. But we are going to be using the router. So let's go and move this stuff aside. So the next thing we're going to need here is our released my network switch. I'm going to be using this Unify 8 port 150 watt PoE switch. So I found this at the thrift store for three bucks. So yeah, I'm going to be using this. I have tested this out and it does work, although at first, I thought I was going to special software to set this up, but no, I just got to plug an Ethernet source in, and then it'll just repeat it over the other ports. So, yeah. The last thing we're going to need is, of course, uh, power supplies and cables. So the switch uses a standard ATX power cord, so I have one right here. So it's the standard 3-pin ATX. And we're also going to need... I'm going to use a short Ethernet cable, a little patch cable, to connect the router to the switch. And the reason why I wasn't going to use the other micro USB cable is as it's too short, I'm going to use this $5 braided micro USB cable instead. Let's go and set it up. On the topic of features, this little router does have quite a few. In fact, you would get a full size USB port for tethering your cell phone to and having a mobile hotspot. It also has a redefinable hardware switch. You get a local area network and um, network in, I forgot what WAN stands for, but whatever. Um, in fact, this thing could actually use 5 volt 1 amp power, so you can power this off of any old power bank. Um, you have your sensibilities here. Uh, of course, I forgot to mention that this USB port can also support data transfer, so you can plug in a USB drive and turn this into a little NAS. So that, that was pretty cool. Um, so you can look at the bottom here. If you want to go search this up on Amazon, but you just search up GINet or GLINet Mango Router, and you'll find it. Now moving on to the computer side of things, I have my HP Compaq um, little modified desktop I built. Um, that'll be the computer I'm gonna use today. I have this ethernet cable here. We're gonna need that in just a few minutes because I believe the only way we can set this up is through ethernet since you need to log into its portal. So all you gotta do is plug in your computer to the local area network port. Do it upside down here. Like that. Now we gotta get our power. So here, just micro USB. Goes into the micro USB port, of course. And once that's said and done, all we gotta do is plug this into the wall. So applying power to the nugget, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in under my desk, which is now shiny because my parents are still getting glass on my desk, so it's quite bad. But anyways, so when you power on the Bengal router, the exposure will focus, there you go, um, you'll get the status LED, the first one is always power, then the other two are for wireless area network and activity, stuff like that. So now, you can go, go over to the, the computer, and now on the computer, we can go ahead and set up the router. So, the router's IP address is 192.168.8.1. 
So if you're in Firefox, my favorite browser, um, not just because it has Fox in the name, but so you can go ahead and just type it in on my 3.168.8.1. You can see I've already been around. So if you get this error, and I'm glad this actually popped up. So basically what you have to do is just wait a little bit and then try again. So yeah, I'll just give it a moment. So here on the admin panel, uh, after you set it up, when you initially do this, it's going to ask you for a language and create an admin password. In this case, you can just use a five letter password like admin, but it's always just to change that to a more difficult password to guess, since that's going to control everything on your router. And now that we're on the dashboard, you can see all the options here, cable, repeater, tethering, and modem. So cable is if you're going to use this as like a normal router through an ethernet cable to a modem. Repeaters to repeat a Wi-Fi network. So you can get this, let's say you have your home network on one end of the house and you can have this on the other end for your kids or whatever. Then tethering is to connect your phone over a cable and use its mobile hotspot data to create a little hotspot. And subsequently, the 3G, 4G modem does the same thing, except there's no phone in between. You just get a set direct cellular signal to the router. The only thing with that is you need a beefier power supply. On the right hand side, you get your wireless area network clients and your local area network clients, wired and wireless. Here, I only have one since that's my computer. Um, and then of course, you get the options for various things. In this case, I'm going to be using it as a repeater. Take a quick glance at the other options. Here's your wireless settings. Um, this is for your Wi Fi network. This only has 2.4 gigahertz Wi Fi, that's in and out. So and then you can see your clients. So you can update your firmware here, set up a firewall, set up a VPN. So you can use this as a VPN server if you wanted to. I think that's how the term. You have your plugins, file sharing to make this into a NAS. You have remote access to remotely manage this. And then your captive portal. Then on here, you have various other passwords. Or in the passwords options. So like you can change your password here. And then your IP addresses, your time zone, and all that good stuff. And then the advanced settings brings you to this. Um, advanced settings menu, basically a more in-depth version of it, but I'm not going to be doubling that today. So the only thing you can change here when you're setting this up is to change your time zone. In this case, I'm in central time, so I can go scroll down the list. Um, either America, Chicago, or central time for me. Let's see. So after successfully setting my time zone, the router time is still wrong, but you can change that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to continue with the setup. So set up the little mango router as a repeater. Um, you go down to the, on the main dashboard, you go down to repeater and click scan. So in this case, you go ahead and let it scan. Look for your network on this list. So. Basically, in my case, I'm going to be using the, my network called AMV Home Lab. So you can go ahead and put in the password. Um, let's see. I believe that was the right password. Now let's go ahead and join. So make sure you have this remember check so it can always sign back in whenever there's a power outage. Not since it always stays on, it's always going to be connected. So this usually takes a little bit, unless you got your password wrong, and it takes even longer, which I probably did. So I'll be back after that. Once you successfully connect it to your network, um, it looks something like this. I'll bring you back to this page. Um, what you can do is refresh, and once the computer turns back in again, um, let's see. There you go. It didn't actually connect. Oh, there it is. So, once the router has successfully connected to your Wi Fi network, in my case it has, this little option will light up. And you can see the name of your network and a little Wi Fi icon. You can see your, um, what's it called? Your Wi Fi statistics. So, yeah, it's basically set up. So, now if you go look down here, I don't know if you can see it, but now my Windows 10. Um, network icon has changed to internet access. That's good. So now we can go ahead and go to, let's say, uh, I don't know. Let's go to CNN. And bam. Very nice. So now, after that, um, let's set up the switch. So, I've moved the stuff around on my desk. 
here, now we can go ahead and set up the switch. So I have my uh, patch cable here. Um, I'm going to connect this to number one for the router. There you go. I'm going to swap my desktop to port number two here. Uh oh, there we go. And then plug in, plugging in the short patch cable to the local area network port. Now we have set a slice down there to 100 for the router and I think megabit or gigabit or something like that for my computer. So yeah, there you go. So going up to the, the add-in panel, I have it on the client's page. Let me refresh that. I have my computer, my desktop, and the switch. So now what I can go ahead and do is alt-tab my way out of here. Um, let's go ahead and refresh that. And there you go. I'm on the internet. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video, and I hope to see you real soon. Have a good day.